Welcome to Huawei Tech Talks at Huawei Analyst Summit 2024. I'm here with Mr. Robert Curran, Principal Analyst at Apple Door, and Mr. Eric Law, President of the MAE Domain for Cloud Core Networks at Huawei. Gentlemen, hello. 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 Okay, so first question for you, Eric. The emergence of uh, ChatGPT in 2023 has made large models a huge trend in all industries. And quickly building AI models and achieving a deep integration between AI and cloud port networks is a clear priority. So what news can you tell us about large AI models uh, in relation to the Huawei cloud port network, ADN solution? Okay, well, uh, this year, we launched the ICN Master Solution powered by the large language module. In the area of the level three, the autonomous network, the network OEM, we basically uh, really on the personal tools and the small modules. However, it's a challenge to the development of the generalization and and closed loop capabilities for the specification of the uh, scenarios and use cases. So the large modules, in contrast, offer uh, extensive knowledge, language uh, understanding, and the task planning and the reasoning, and the scenario generalization. So it uh, can efficiently overcome the O&M bottleneck of the level three, and to en enabling the transmission to level four autonomous network from the automation to the intelligence. Our pioneers application on large modules in core network O&M addressing the critical issue such as high network risks and the low operational efficiency, high skill requirements and the lack of the real-time service experience assurance. By focusing on this creating a core network with high reliability, extremely simplified and uh, optimizing experience we aim to enhance service delivery for operators. Thank you. Okay, so Eric, in terms of um, intelligent networks, most of what we hear in this regard uh, relates to O&M uh, automation, which uh, create efficiency improvements. Can you explain why deploying intelligence in the core network emphasizes high stability? Okay, well, uh, for the position of the network, the core network is important and sensitive because uh, any accident happened on the core network may cause the whole network to shut down. So it's a nightmare for the CEO and the CTO. So it's uh, already uh, reached to a consensus in the industry. The high reliability is the most important thing, but it's uh, not only uh, the consensus, but also we need a standard to define what the reliability of the core network, what is the network should be. And uh, based on this definition, and we will promote the network to be a more high rank, such as the automation and the intelligence. So we focused at first on how to define the reliability of the core network. Secondly, we need a, a system to a measurement to do the uh, evaluate how the network is uh, reliability enough. Uh, we need a static, traditional static way and also the new dramatic way to do the measurement, such as the simulation and uh, such as uh, uh, fault input system and to do the dynamic, uh, dynamic uh, evaluation of this network and to help the operator to find some risk and there's some problem in the network. So Robert, Apple Door has been studying the self-intelligent network field and the reports you've rece uh, released have received frequent attention in the industry. So what's your take on the relationship between self-intelligent networks and high stability networks? Yeah, it's very clear there's a close relationship between these two things. We're moving from a world where um, network change to the network used to be complicated, undesirable, high risk. We're moving to a world where that change needs to be able to be made very frequently and very intelligently. For that, we have to rely on, on network data. 
and that ability to make change uh, is only really safe if it comes with keeping the network stable. The whole point is that with intelligent, you know, self-intelligent networks, we can monitor the networks in real time, uh, understand how they're behaving, and make continuous change to optimize performance, optimize user experience, and, and keep costs uh, low. And we're also seeing a change from being able to do that just on a reactive basis to being more proactive and, and predictive. In other words, using that network intelligence uh, to improve the stability of the network going into the future, not just you know, re regaining stability once something else has happened. So absolutely critical, uh, these two um, come together. Okay, um, so you mentioned the benefits of intelligent networks, but what difficulties do you think exist in applying large AI models uh, to the core network in terms of ONM? Yeah, it's, it's clear we're still at uh, early days, but uh, I'm gonna mention a couple of challenges in particular. The first is to do with the complexity of the data. In an O&M context, you've got an enormous amount of data uh, happening in real time, plus all your historical accumulated data, knowledge from around the business, knowledge from, from vendors, equipment, manuals of all kinds, so what we call multi multimodal information, not just data, but images, pictures, designs, charts, graphs, uh, all kinds of information that all uh, come to bear. And so any, con any uh, O&M use of uh, large language models and large models um, you must take into account the, the complexity of that data, working with it and, and making sense. That takes me to another, uh, another challenge in this process, which is the distinction between um, what are you know, generalized uh, language models, uh, large models, um, and more context-specific ones. So part of the goal here and part of the challenge is to, is to use the very specific domain knowledge, maybe process-specific, task-specific information uh, required for grip precision uh, in what's a sensitive part of the network and combining that with the, the generalized uh, interaction that you get from, from uh, large language foundational models. So putting those two together will give you both the, the power uh, and the precision that you need for an O&M context. It, that's a challenge because uh, obviously we're still building some of those things uh, and, and applying them in that real-time uh, context is, is still something we're just beginning to do as an industry. Okay. okay. And, um, Eric, uh, one thing we'd all like to know is how does the ICN master solve these technical challenges? Yeah, of course, we also faced with these problems. Uh, but we try to do some uh, new way to solve these problems. One, of course, we need to improve our data quality uh, because uh, we think it's uh, very important for the training of the model to understanding our uh, intention. So the data quality is the uh, first one we must do improve. And another one is uh, we combine the different way to improve the module ability, such as the uh, uh, short and the long term and uh, the memory, the RG way, and also the small module to uh, facilitate semantic understanding and the tools invoking, and also the logical reasoning. Uh, this approach has the intelligence of the corner network troubleshooting and uh, complaint handling uh, and make our extensive experience about uh, more than 30 years of the global uh, O&M experience to improve our module, uh, to improve its judgment and uh, the thinking train to, for the uh, accurate. So, uh, however, we're still uh, on the test of our, our system and our way to improve the, our uh, the accurate and the efficiency of the module train. Uh, we also hope more and more uh, partners to join together to solve these problems and the challenges. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Eric. Thank you, Robert, and thank you for watching. <laughs>